Hi everyone, welcome to this presentation. Today we are going to see how to simulate an LLC resonant converter. So in this video we are going to see first an introduction, then we will see the basic operation of the LLC resonant converter, we will show a design example, and finally we will see how to do the simulation of this converter. There are two main types of DC-DC converters. We have the non-resonant converter, as shown here. We have the half bridge, the transformer, the rectifier, and then we have the filter, LC, and then the, the load. We know that in this type of converters, we don't have a resonant tank. So the typical waveforms that we have in the switches are as shown here we have a square waveform for the voltage we have trapezoidal waveforms for the currents and we know that these converters operate with hard switching so at these intervals here when we turn off the switch and when we turn on the switch we are going to have losses switching losses due to the operation of the transistors usually this type of converters operates with pwm control at constant frequency so we are changing the duty cycle of the converter in order to regulate the output voltage so for example in this case we have this expression here if we change the value of the duty cycle we can change the value of the output voltage. The second type is the resonant converter. In these resonant converters we have a resonant tank as shown here. We have again the half bridge, we have the rectifier, we have the load, in this case is a battery, and the typical waveforms that we have in the switches are sinusoidal waveforms for the current and also square waveforms for the voltage. But in this case, the current is going to evolve sinusoidally and we can have what we call soft switching. So we can decrease the switching losses. Usually this type of converters operate with constant duty cycle, as shown here, 0.5. And the parameter that we use to control the output voltage is the frequency. So we use variable frequency to regulate the output voltage. The main advantages of these converters are, as shown here, that we are going to have lower switching losses and therefore higher efficiency. And also because the switching losses are lower, we can increase the switching frequency and obtain at the end a higher power density for our converter. So this is a very interesting solution in many applications. So today we are going to focus on the LLC resonant converter, which is a very, very popular converter for many applications nowadays we can get lots of information about the design and the operation of this converter and one very good reference that we can find on the internet is this one here designing an LLC resonant half bridge power converter by Hong Wang. This document can be downloaded from this link here and this is the document that we are going to use to study this converter and to show how to do a simulation of this converter. So here we can see in the schematic we have the half bridge, we have the resonant tank, the resonant inductance, the resonant capacitance here, we have the transformer. A very important element in this converter is this one, the magnetizing inductance of our transformer. LM, and then we have the rectifier, the output capacitor to filter the output voltage, and then the load. We know that the equivalent circuit of this converter 
is this one shown here because at the end the half bridge is going to behave like a voltage source square waveform voltage source and the output of the converter and this part here including the rectifier the output filter and the load can be represented by this equivalent resistance that is shown here with this value depending on the resistance of the load and the number of turns of the transformer. This is very well known, so we are not going to enter into uh, the detail of how to obtain this expression. Another important parameter in this converter is the inductance ratio, which is given by the ratio of the magnetizing inductance over the resonant inductance. A very convenient way to analyze the behavior of the LLC converter is by using the first harmonic approximation. So we are going to consider only the first harmonic of the square wave that is generated by the half bridge. Then we can use the conventional techniques of analysis of electrical circuits to obtain the gain of the converter. So we can obtain the value of the output voltage, VOE, over the value of the first harmonic and is given by this simple expression here. So from this we can do a representation and obtain the gain of the converter as a function of the frequency for different values of the load. So here we are using normalized parameters. So we have the normalized frequency, which is given by this expression, is the switching frequency over the resonant frequency, FO. This resonant frequency corresponds to the resonant frequency of the series circuit given by LR and CR, so is the resonant frequency of this part here. Then we have the inductance ratio, LN. We are also normalizing the load, so we are using the quality factor, which is given by this ratio here. And with this, we can obtain the gain using this expression, and from the gain, we can obtain finally the output voltage using this other equation here. So if we look at the characteristics of gain versus frequency for different values of the quality factor, then we can see that we have the series resonant frequency at this point here. We have another resonant frequency which is given by this expression here. It corresponds to the resonant frequency given by the addition of the inductances and the resonant capacitance and it will be around this part here. But usually, as we are going to see in the next slides, the operation of the converter is selected to be around this series resonant frequency F0. And this is so because the switching features are going to be better when we are operating in this area close to the series resonant frequency F0. Now let's review very quickly the waveforms that we have in the converter. We are showing here the voltages at the gates of the transistor. Here is the voltage at this point, which is the voltage applied to the resonant tank. Here we have the resonant current, IR, and this is the current circulating through the magnetizing inductance. And finally, at the bottom, we have the current circulating through diode D1 and diode D2. So the important point to have soft switching 
in this converter is that the resonant current, the current that is circulating here from the bridge, has to be lagged with respect to the voltage that is generated at this point by the bridge. This is so because in this way we are going to have zero voltage switching characteristics for the switches. The reason is that during this interval here we are going to have the diode, this diode conducting the current. So as we can see here the current is negative so the resonant current is circulating through the diode in this direction and at a given instant at this point here the current becomes positive so it's going to circulate in the other direction and now is circulating through the channel of the MOSFET transistor. So the turn on process of the MOSFET transistor is with zero voltage across the channel because the diode was conducting previously. And of course we have a similar behavior for the bottom transistor Q2. This is the reason why we need the current lagging the voltage applied to the resonant tank. We can achieve this situation operating at exactly the series frequency of the resonant tank but the good thing of the LLC converter is that we can achieve a wide range for zero voltage switching because even when we operate below the series resonant frequency we can achieve also good current waveforms in which the resonant current is lagging the voltage. Even if we operate above the series resonant frequency, we can even have negative current here at the beginning and therefore we can have zero voltage switching. In fact, if we analyze the operation of the converters, we will see that the inductive region is all this one that is shown in green color and therefore this is the area in which we are going to be able to have zero voltage switching for the transistors. Another important point is the behavior of the diodes. If we operate at series resonant frequency or below the series resonant frequency, we are going to have currents through the diodes, through the output diodes in this way. So the current is going to zero and we have an interval here uh, in which we don't have current circulating through the, through the diodes. Same thing here below the resonant frequency. And this is good because in this way the diodes are turning off in a natural way just because the current goes to zero and then the blocking process of the diode takes place. So in this way we are going to have the minimum recovery losses because we are not forcing the diodes to be turned off. But if we operate above the series resonant frequency, then we are going to have this situation in which we have to interrupt abruptly by reverse biasing the diodes and therefore we are going to have here a much greater value of the recovery losses. However, to have the resonant current lagging the voltage applied to the resonant tank is not enough to provide zero voltage switching. We need to fulfill more conditions. And this is so because we need to have a dead time between the turning off of one transistor and the turning on of the other transistor to avoid short circuiting the branch of the half bridge. And because of the capacitances that we have between the drain and the source of the MOSFET transistors, 
during this dead time interval. We have to charge and discharge these two capacitances in order to be able to enter into the next interval. So the situation here, for example, in this point here at the beginning of the dead time is the following. We have conducting this transistor here. The current is positive, so it's circulating this way through the channel of the transistor. So this capacitor here has zero voltage and this capacitor here has the total voltage V in. Because this transistor here, of course, is open. So during this dead time interval, what is going to happen is that transistor Q1 is going to be open and the resonant current can only circulate through both capacitors. So the equivalent circuit is like this one. Usually, because the dead time interval is so small, we can consider that the current the, during this interval is constant during all the interval is this value here, the peak value of the magnetizing current. So this current is going to split in two parts. One is circulating through this capacitor and the other one is, circulate, is circulating through this other capacitor here. So this capacitor is going to be charged from zero voltage up to the input voltage, while this capacitor here which at the beginning is at V in, is going to be discharged because the current is circulating in this way. So at the end of the interval, we need that the top capacitor here is charged to the total voltage V in and the bottom capacitor here has to be totally discharged. And because this voltage is almost zero, then the body diode of Q2 can start conducting this value of the current, which goes is positive here, so goes in this direction. So in order that this charge and discharge of the capacitances takes place, we need two conditions. We need enough current here and we need enough dead time for the process to take place. So this gives two conditions that can be summarized as shown in this document with these two expressions. This one is that the energy stored in the inductors has to be greater than the energy that is going to be exchanged with the capacitors. And the other one is that the dead time has to be higher than this value here. We are not going to enter into how to calculate these values. We can find this in the literature about this converter. We can see here in these equations the capacitance is represented as Cx as an equivalent capacitance because here we should consider not only the drain to source capacitance but also all the parasitic capacitances that we could have in our circuit between these two points. Usually these parasitic capacitance can be neglected and we can consider that we are going to have only the capacitance between the drain and the source. Later, experimentally, we can adjust the dead time in order to assure that we are going to fulfill the zero voltage switching in our converter. One of the important advantages of the LLC converter also is that we can easily fulfill this condition here because the current that we have during the switching interval here during the dead time is given by the magnetizing current. So we can assure that we can have enough current to provide zero voltage switching characteristic. And this is so because the magnetizing inductance has this triangular waveform, which is almost constant because it's given by the voltage that we are applying here to the magnetizing inductance. And this voltage is a square waveform with a peak value, which is given by the DC output voltage 
transferred into the primary side. So this is something like V0 prime. So if we are regulating the output voltage, then the peak current of the magnetizing inductance is always constant and we can assure that we are going to have enough current to provide zero voltage switching even when the resonant current is small. Because in other converters, if we don't have the magnetizing current, this resonant current can get very small and then we cannot have enough current to do the charging and discharging process of the capacitors. And therefore, the zero voltage switching operation is lost. So finally, to understand the operation of the converter, we can see here the characteristics of gain versus frequency for different values of the quality factor, which at the end is the load of the converter. So here we have the characteristic corresponding to a quality factor equal to zero. So is a load resistance equal to infinite. And then we have the other characteristic here, which corresponds to the minimum value of the load resistance or the maximum value of the quality factor. So this in green will be the area of operation of the converter. We have a maximum value of the gain which is necessary for attaining the output voltage when the input voltage is minimum and also the lower level of the gain corresponds to the maximum value of the input voltage. And with this, we get at the end the range of operation of the switching frequency of our converter. So we have to operate from this point here with a minimum switching frequency up to this point here with a maximum switching frequency. So here is the design example that is presented in this document. The input voltage goes from 375 volts up to 405 volts. Rated output power is 300 watts. The output voltage is 12 volts and the rated output current is 25 amperes. Here are other values and the switching frequency goes from 70 kilohertz up to 150 kilohertz. These are some of the results. The inductance ratio is equal to 3.5. The series resonant frequency is 124 kilohertz. The parallel resonant frequency is 58.6 kilohertz, much lower than this other one. The necessary dead time is calculated to be higher than 85 nanoseconds. Here we have the values of the resonant inductance, the magnetizing inductance, the resonant capacitance. The tense ratio is 16. The output capacitor is 330 microfarads. The nominal load resistance is 0 0.48 ohms. The rating for the switches is this value here around 500 volts, 3 amperes. And the capacitance between drain and source was estimated equal to 0 0.2 nanofarads. This was used to calculate the dead time. And for the output rectifier, we need diodes that can withstand at least 30 volts and 50 amperes. I have made this simple script here in WinPython to obtain the voltage gain and the output voltage at the different frequencies. So here we can see the results for this prototype uh, for the input voltage equal to 375 volts. We have these values here. So we will have to operate around 120 kilohertz to get 12 volts. And at 405 volts, we need to operate something between 130 and 140 kilohertz to get the 12 volts. If you are not familiar with WinPython, I recommend you to watch this video, WinPython number one introduction, which is available on my channel. 
This is the schematic that we are going to use to do the simulation. We are going to use this special integrated circuit that we developed in a previous video, LT Spice number 10, how to create a half bridge driver with programmable dead time. So we can now use this component to drive the half bridge and the dead time can be adjusted as we as we have seen in this previous video by uh, using this time constant. Here we have selected 150 nanoseconds so the dead time is approximately equal to three times the value of this time constant so it's going to be 450 nanoseconds is much higher than the minimum value that we require but I have selected this to better show also the switching waveforms in the converter so we are injecting into our circuit the signal, the clock signal at the switching frequency that we can select here in this parameter here we have all the different components with the values that we have seen I have selected here these transistors are 600 volts, 0 0.2 ohms and this diode here, uh, shock key diodes of 45 volts, 25 amperes and with this simple uh, circuit here, with this voltage source we are generating here a voltage which is equivalent to the magnetizing current. We are doing the simulation for 50 switching periods here, this is the end, 50 switching periods, and we are saving data corresponding to the last five switching periods. It is convenient to do it this way because we are going to change the switching frequency so we want to always see a um, fixed number of switching periods. And finally here with these expressions we are calculating the efficiency of our converters as we have seen in other videos previously. So now we have here the circuit in LTSPICE, so we can run the simulation and take a look at the results. We are going to start looking at the gate waveforms. We have here the voltage at the gate of the top transistor between the gate and the source and here is the voltage at the gate of the bottom transistor. So if we take a look here, we will see that the, the time is approximately the value that we have seen, which is around 450 nanoseconds. So now we can maybe add another pane and see the output voltage and then we can see that the output voltage is around 11.3 volts only and this is because we were neglecting the voltage drop across the diode so we are going to need to decrease the switching frequency in order to increase the output voltage so if we adjust maybe this to 110 kilohertz and run the simulation again then we can see that we can reach the 12 volts at the output. We also calculated that for 405 volts we need something like 135 kilohertz so let's take a look and then we can see again that the output voltage is a little bit lower than 12 volts, 11.3 due to the voltage drop across the diodes so we need again to decrease a little bit this frequency so maybe we can increase the output voltage and maybe if we go to 125 then we can get around 12 volts. 
So the point is that we can get by changing the switching frequency, we can get the target output voltage. We can take a look at the efficiency that we are getting in our converter. For this, we press Ctrl L to see the log file, and here we have the results. So we have the average input current, average input voltage, same thing for the output, input power, output power, and finally the efficiency, which is 94.6%, which is the expected value for this type of converter. Now let's do another simulation to see more waveforms. We have selected now here 380 volts and 110 kilohertz of operation. So let's run the simulation. Now it is ready to see the waveforms of interest. We have here the gate voltages. Here is the voltage at the middle point here. So is the voltage that we are applying to the resonant circuit and here at the bottom we can see the resonant current in blue and the magnetizing current in pink. So we can see the interval, the dead time interval at which we are going to have this current equal to the magnetizing current. And here we have the waveforms corresponding to transistor M1. So here we have the gate voltage, this is the drain to source voltage, this is the current entering into the drain pin of the transistor, and this is the instantaneous power, so it's the product of voltage, drain to source voltage and drain current. We can make this bigger so we can see better the waveforms, so we can see how here we have a peak for the power, which is a positive peak, and then here we have a negative peak. So this corresponds mainly to the charging and discharging of the drain to source capacitance of the transistor. So here we are entering power into the capacitor, and here we are getting power out of the capacitor. So at the end the average power is much lower. We can uh, measure this energy entering here in this process because we can uh, use RTSPIs measure this energy corresponding approximately to this interval here. And with this we can have an estimation of the losses, the switching losses in the transistor. Here, for example, for this interval, the energy is 11.4 microjoules. If we go to the other interval here and measure, we can get also the energy, which in this case is minus 9.6 microjoules, a little bit lower than the other value. I have made the math here in this slide, so this peak here has 11.3 microjoules and this other peak here has 9.6 microjoules, so the difference is 1.7 microjoules and this corresponds to a power dissipation of 0.19 watts. So this is approximately the dissipation that we are having during the switching process which corresponds to the losses in the channel of the transistor during the turn of process. And finally here we have other waveforms. Here we have at the top the voltage across the primary of the transformer. This is the magnetizing current and here at the bottom we have the current through the diodes. So we can see how at this frequency, 110 kilohertz, we have this interval here in which we don't have any diode conducting. So the secondary of the transformer is floating and then we have this ringing uh, the voltage across the transformer. And as we have seen before, in this operation mode, the diodes are naturally going to zero and turning off without reverse biasing. However, if we increase the, say for example, 150 kilohertz, 
and run the simulation again then now we can see that we have no dead time interval between the conduction of the diodes but now we are going to have higher reverse recovery losses in the diodes because we are forcing the diodes to turn off by applying reverse voltage. If we increase here, we can see the reverse recovery of the diode. Well, this is all today in this presentation. I hope that you find this video useful for your future activities. Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.